And welcome back to more Panted Guilds. Between episodes, I changed a few things around. Nothing super massive, but I did try to designate some new areas for mining. So this is my proposed layout for the new inn yet to be named. Uh, this is just, again, going to have probably like a little bar thing in the middle so people can drink. But then mostly it's going to have a lot of rooms because we do have a lot of people who are staying with us. Once this is complete, we will get everything moved over in terms of beds and doors and things like that. And then we'll kind of repurpose the other tavern in order to include a dining hall. So more to come on that. I do have some chairs and things like that queued up. We are making headway on our uh, justice area a little bit. And I do have a pretty big channel order to start digging out the, the next floor of our massive um, yet to be determined of the purpose type of tower. I think I should... Because we don't have a lot of, like, guild halls, why don't we, and I also realized that I gave a lot of digging orders, we could probably stand to have another miner or two added to the queue. Well, we have a lot of miners, though, to be fair. Four miners is actually pretty healthy. I've also gone through our list of dwarves, and I've tried to name anyone who has kind of a major role. So, by and large, if there is a restriction on a building like a only a professional still worker a brewer can use the the brewery then i'm going to try to name that particular dwarf so for example elaith here is a brewer i actually also gave a couple of custom job titles just to help people stand out so yasha is set to a stonesmith even though i think yasha does have a social uh a social noble role does she not she is the legendary stone crafter she was a brewer before but because she did have that legendary item crafted a long time ago. I've decided to move her over into the stone crafter. It should be really easy for other dwarves to pick up on the brewing and planting types of roles. And they'll be able to kind of come in there and get that skill up higher. So metalsmith, stonesmith, as you can see. I've tried to go through also all of our soldiers. I'm going to start renaming anyone who's in the military as archer or soldier. Not necessarily recruit. This is the default, I think, whenever somebody has certain skill. So I want to specifically categorize everyone who's in either of the two squads as either soldier or archer, just so I can see at a glance when I'm looking through the list of dwarves uh, in terms of their names and stuff like that. That way I can kind of see what their title is. I wonder if I can get a little bit more width out of this in terms of like looking at names. Yeah, a little bit more perfect, a little bit more room there. There's a lot. I wish you could expand some of the columns. I don't think we really are using a lot of these custom labors yet, but there is plenty of room. I was thinking about setting up a very complex labor work detail system, but I feel like without the ability to customize the symbol and because you can set restrictions on craft shops and things like that in the workers tab, I don't really know if we need to necessarily go about making specific labors for a lot of the creativity types of roles because I can just restrict at the building level and I don't have to worry about anything else. So that's my theory there. Do we have some offices? We still have some offices on the living floor, don't we? Yeah, we do have some offices and I think they're assigned to the appropriate people. A quick inventory of where we're at. I needed to, we did get some more floodgates down. That's great. Let's go ahead and link up these floodgates. I don't think these are linked yet. Let's link this lever to our newest floodgate. Perfect. And we'll link this one to this one down here. So we'll get that going in just a few minutes. Fantastic. I wonder if I could, a little risky, but I could wind up opening our main floodgate here and trying to get some water into the other new rooms. I think that's fair. I don't think that's too big of a deal. I wonder if I can really quickly come in here and grab some of this magnetite. In mudstone it's not a lot but it's more of just a preference the fact that i prefer to have no stones randomly like lying around behind doors and stuff so let's unforbid those and let our dwarves work on that for just a bit so this worker was a lathe let me go back into my naming thing here and sort by name and we're going to find a lathe in here there we go brewer master brewer a lathe and I believe the next name on the queue for me is Ulfir. Did I name somebody Ulfir already? I really, I really want to be careful about custom names because if I keep doing this and I keep double naming people, I'm going to lose my mind. And yeah, like this, the way I'm doing this right now is at a glance, we're going to, anyone who's a 
master of their craft, we're probably going to have them as a named dwarf. It just helps us really at a glance know who's doing what, and it really helps me understand who is like my um, random dwarves that can help out in other areas in the fortress. That's going to be more helpful as I can be like, oh yeah, quickly, you're a brewer or what have you. So I've also assigned Moses to the uh, brewer role. I figure it's better to restrict um, the creation, some of the creation things like brewing and cooking to specific dwarves. I literally already forgot that name. Moses. Moses. That way they build up their skill faster and it's so easy just to replace someone. So I don't feel bad about moving out Yasha or anything like that. I think Durgan Dourbeard. What a great name. Durgan, my friend, welcome to the other half of our brewer pair combo. Nicely done. It looks like our miners are busy doing the mining, which is great. They are digging down. Hopefully without collapsing anything and thus killing themselves immediately. That's always the goal. You know, try to arrive at our... Hard digging completion without murder uh, or suicide. So we have, I think I added some more stops into this minecart track to try to experiment again with the automatic dumping thing. So I believe it looks like the cart is missing. So I likely have to come back here. Let's go ahead and close those back up. I'm going to try this one more time. So I made a new stop here and this is going to be desired items by the minecart. Once again, we are working with stone. And it is the colonite because it's right next door. So once colonite has been delivered from, this is the stockpile to give items, which is right next door. Once they have been given, move west immediately when full of desired items. Yep, that sounds good. And then what is this symbol here? This is of any items or des desired items. Okay. And this is this kind of like immediately always at most 100% when full. Perfect. So that's taken care of at that stop. And then our new stop is going to be here. And this one we are giving to this stockpile. Done. And then we're going to guide immediately east once empty. Immediately at, yep. Guide east immediately when empty of any items. That is the next step. Because this stockpile is kind of full, let's redesignate a little bit to increase the amount of space it has. I'm really wondering if it literally will just turn and dump, because that would be so cool if a stockpile can do that automatically. And then I think the final step is to add a stockpile, sorry, add a minecart to this shindig here. We'll give it one more shot. I am determined to figure out how this minecart system works, because again, it really depends, I guess, on where the roles and where the global orders are coming from. If we say there is a standing order for people to not gather stone, I'm fairly sure that would stop any work on this track or this cart. However, if we remove every single stone stockpile except for like one, dwarves won't have anywhere to take stone. So theoretically, if the only stockpile left is the one that has a cart on it, I wonder if that would then only use the cart to move things. That's the big question. Currently, everyone and their mother-in-law is down here moving stone. So, a little bit awkward. <laughs> the dog came through here real quick. I'm very excited about the justice thing. I really want to explore that this episode. I have no idea what skills are required, but again, as always, I'm sure we can just assign someone and they will gather any appropriate skills. The rest of this room, and kind of for the foreseeable future, what I'm going to probably do here is continue to just mine out in this direction. And once we, hopefully, inevitably, we will get to a point where we do understand the minecart system. And I will make this entire area one giant storage. And from then on, we won't have this, like we have an extra bit of storage down here. I think I might wind up turning this all into wood only as kind of a staging ground. And then the only other stone places are kind of here. So in this particular spot, we're storing flux stone. If I remember correctly, this is only chalk in this one. And then I'm also storing chalk here because we have so much chalk that could become the main stone we use to make items. 
Are you giving and taking? Oh, you're not. How dare you? That's fine. I don't. I don't mind for a little bit if we have some wonky tables. We'll come back to my perfectionist bent in just a bit. We did not get rid of. This is somebody's head. <laughs> it's so messed up. We've got a mangled skeleton. We have a couple of body parts. Is that part of the standing order system? Refuse. We dump skulls. We do save bones, shells, and skins. I think it's just going to be queued up to be brought down to the death stockpile, as it were. Are we... Yeah, we are getting people to come out here and grab the metals, which is fine. There's a lot of digging set up right now. And I kind of gave them all orders at the same time. And I accidentally gave them all pri high priority orders. So I think they're digging a bit here, going downstairs, digging a bit here, and then going down into the main temple and digging out there. All right, where's my minecart? God, there are so many dwarves hanging out here right now. So what if we were to... Let's expand this a bit, because at the moment it's a little bit small. Schmull. So here's our big colonite stockpile. So theoretically, dwarves are going to kind of dump some colonite in here every so often. All right, there we go. We get at least one piece. What I'm hoping for is that once this gets full, someone's going to immediately take it down to the western side, and then it's going to auto-dump. Although, the pace at which dwarves are coming to dump stone might outpace... <laughs> God... It might literally outpace the performance of our minecart here. This is crazy. What if I just do the order about no one does stone for a bit? No one gathers stone. Minerals. So we're going to ignore minerals for a bit and free up the rest of the fortress to do some other stuff. Like they're, they're actually so far downstairs that I think they're literally going through like a thirst phase. They've been so far away from water for so long. Are these someone's teeth? Quoth lower left back tooth. Did Quoth lose four teeth in a fight? That is amazing. Where did Quoth go? He should still be in the room. Let's really quickly take a quick peek at Quoth if I can find him here. Tavern Keeper... Military kills. You didn't kill anyone. You're still healthy. You have no wounds and no medical history, but medical is not the same as a fighting history. How can you get to the combat log if there's no combat? That's a good question. We'll have to follow up on that in a bit. Apparently, Quoth got in a bit of a fight, inserting himself as the innkeeper trying to keep order into the room. I needed to follow up on some drink orders. Let's go ahead and do drink. Brew drink from plant. And we're going to try to do 200 or so every time our stockpile goes below. I don't know. We'll say amount of drinks is under 500. You like to have a nice big stockpile. Huge stockpile. And then we'll go back to fine meals because I did remove that as well. I did kind of clean up some of the work orders. As you can see, they're not all redone yet, but I'm going to try to re rediscover a few at a time. So make 200. Same thing. 200 meals every time we're 500 or shorter. Uh, unrotten prepared meals is... Oops. This one. And then at most or greater, less than. There we go. Whenever we're under 500 meals, we will make more meals. Sounds great. We do only have one farmer's workshop, but we do have two kitchens. We have a, an actual... So Yasha still assigned here as a chef. Let's remove Yasha. And we're going to find a couple new chefs. Is there anyone that has the skill? Skills to pay the bills. Dastot here. Dastot does not seem to be in any kind of group. Let's find Dastot in our list of people. What I Again, I'm, I'm really looking forward to when, if and when we can get Dwarf Therapist in here. You are not assigned to any squad. Fantastic. So we are going to name you as well. Did I get everybody in here? There's Harjutir. Harjutir. Did I actually already name you before? Nope. You are the single soul cook. Congratulations. We're going to grab another person just to have as a chef. Because you were adequate or talented. Then there's Yasha. Then there's Sodel, who is a planter. We'll assign you, Sodel. Double check that they're not assigned to a military squad. I am trying to get that kind of permanent military thing going on so that we don't have anyone who 
no jobs will be waiting on one particular dwarf, basically. All right. His friends call him Sod. <laughs> Sounds great. So Sod has been assigned as the cook. Hey, by the way, speaking of assignments and stuff, do we need to... Ah, that's right. I did actually assign some more things. So we got the Silk Rose here. Uh, Vukar Dokadom, or whatever, is the clothier. I've assigned Sarvesh here as our leathersmith, if you will. And then we still have, of course, Jade's Workshop, which is assigned only to Jade. And I did assign one shop to Yasha, although theoretically, I guess she w could wind up going to any of these shops. The restriction stuff, I'm not super worried about. I do want it on, like, the more expensive, not expensive per se, but the more valuable types of buildings. So we still do have the Panted Guild Blacksmith with Arawea as our metalsmith. We've got the Scorched Hammer, which is Nessus the Weaponsmith. And then we've got Ward Maidens, which is a nod to Skyrim, and that's Dread the Armorsmith. So we do have our kind of our top tier, if you will. And we're also, are you sleeping right here at the forge? <laughs> Udib, get a room, buddy. Are you a visitor? You are a visitor, actually. The Untamed Silvers, right? That's not our... That's not our thing. That's not our group. Released books, ropes of defense, former member of a bunch of these different locations. So you are, in fact, a visitor who just doesn't have a room. Maybe we need to have a bunk room for guests somehow. Uh, let's take a quick peek. Why is there blood here? Goblin blood. Okay, so that was probably the body getting dumped and or moved. Really got to figure out the removal of, of dead <laughs> dead bodies at some point and how to clean this up. Goodness. I was also thinking about ways to uh, kill enemies and things like that. This could be, it's a little bit, it's so narrow, or not even narrow, but it's so short between the entrance to kind of the rest of the world and then our fortress that I doubt I'd be able to really collect a lot of, uh, of enemies in this particular area. I would love to do something where we hollow out the, the uh, entire roof of this section. I could basically carve out the entire roof edge and leave one, I think I can actually put a, a single support here, carve out the other piece, and that one support would be holding up the entire ceiling, and then I could attach that to a lever, which would then break the support and break the entire ceiling, crushing any enemies in the hallway. So that could be fun, although I think it's a little bit too, it's a great idea in theory, but in execution, likely the, the enemies would be trickling on in. We're probably going to want to come back to the idea of harvesting not harvesting um flattening out the approaches here and getting some of our defenses set up at some point soon in fact it's already kind of looking somewhat how i wanted it to be we just need to keep bringing back the hallway i think we've mostly narrowed down the problem <laughs> of killing each other uh, when we're trying to do any kind of these orders so i'm going to give a couple more orders like this just kind of, again, all we're doing is just bringing back the, trimming back the edges of the mountain a smidge. Uh, let's see. The human bard, Mistrum, has shared many tales from beyond Panted Guild. Thanks for sharing your stories, my friend. Who do we have going on in the military, or what do we have going on in the military area? We've got Mayfall here, who is working on his individual combat. I have had a lot of archers come through. I do have a mixed assignment at the moment so we do have our staggered training now, i have not touched anything with the staggered training rule so perhaps uh we might be in another loop here let's watch kick Rost here for a bit so kick Rost is storing their owned item their own item they're hauling a battle axe they're hauling an iron shield so weirdly they're not using the weapon racks whatsoever which is kind of strange. Now, I think if we go into the location, into the barracks, and into... Let's see. These are assigned to the Axe Dwarves. This is part of... There's not really... Yeah, this is just a setting. And then where do we go for the settings again? Which squads will use these? Yeah. Oh, hold up. Weather squad... No, it's well, weather squads will train here. They will store their individually assigned... They should uh, store their individually assigned weapons. But they're not doing that. This is equipment here, such as ammunition. Maybe I'll... Yeah, I think we kept that off for for reasons. So coming back to... No, this is Deacon. Who was I just watching? Keycrossed here. Let's watch Keycrossed a little bit more. You are going to pick up some more equipment. Dumping a bunch of stuff on the ground. Yep. 
and we're generally back to the same old eternal loop. Ah, this is frustrating. I don't think any of these people, like if we look at Keycrossed here, Keycrossed is not set as a minor. You are assigned to facility services, so let me uncheck that. But that shouldn't matter because your role is not related to holding anything in your hand. You're not assigned to a job that makes you have something. Equipment-wise, yeah, everyone's going to be going through all their crazy stuff here. Um, we do have uniform things. So we do have the iron axes. I'm going to try to redo this again. Maybe there's some setting that I've just screwed up here. Ugh, kind of annoying. So again, we're going for... I don't think I'm going to go for the material. I think I'm just going to go for the type of what it, you know, whatever it is. And you just grab what you can grab. I don't think it's leggings either. I think it's greaves is what we not normally equip everyone with. Cool. Handwear, we do have gauntlets there. Headwear, legwear, footwear. High boots. Is it just a one high boot? Maybe, maybe I've never, maybe I signed two high boots and that's why they were getting confused. A shield of some sort, and then of course an axe. That's it. So this is the. We'll just try this base. We'll call this basic axes. It's going to be the uniform, and then uniform worn over clothing. I want this to replace the clothing. Partial matches are okay. Let's see if we can stay nice and loose with this assignment, and if it causes any problems. So where did Kikroth go? Kikroth. Let's see if this changes your crazy chaos. So you're going to be going to pick up your stuff. Yep, you're picking up gear from like all these different locations. You're storing your gear. You're going to go eat. That's a nice change of pace. I like how you're going to the guild hall. Apparently that's the closest place that has a chair. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> the fortress is growing so fast that I've not had time to really think through a lot of our simple things. Maybe I should have a table and chairs inside of the barracks. Yep, and then you're going right back into your pickup items thing. What are you wearing right now? Are you completely naked? I do, in fact, think you are completely naked. So let's keep this on inventory. There's your battle axe. Yep. There's your shield. This is just... It's so nuts to me. I, I cannot figure out. They don't have a separate job. They've got... Right there at this point, they, I think they've got everything they need for their role except for a backpack. So there's the backpack. Probably going to get provisions next. Yep, sure enough. There's the provisions. So right now, they have everything that is required of their role. And as soon as they have it all, they drop everything down. At least they stored it all in the right place. However, now they're going to go get dressed in their own gear. Gosh, that's crazy. Let's take a look. I think it's the schedule thing. Let's go to the monthly schedules. Here's the staggered training thing. So on for, it looks like a couple months off for a few months. So you are off duty. When you're off duty, uh, okay, maybe this is part of what it is. Orders only. So maybe I want you to always stay equipped and I want you to stay in the barracks at will versus need. We'll experiment with that. Minimum number of soldiers to follow the orders, 10. I'm done editing. This is the off-duty role. Did that work? Unnamed orders. Where did my... Was it a new column? We are... Okay, so we are equipped. So then I copy this, and we're going to paste, paste. Paste, paste, paste. It says no orders, though. But it is stay equipped, though. So sleep in the barracks when you need to. So three on, three off. Yep, always stay equipped with your gear. Always stay equipped. Just double checking that it kept the... It copied the paste. Great. So there are basically th six months where we are not doing stuff. And then the training roll, I want at least ten dwarves staying at equipped... Always sleep in their room. That's the. I don't even need to edit this because it looks like it's completely fine. So we'll give this staggered training thing another shot. Now that I've got it set to always equip, let's go ahead and watch Keycroft and see 
if they're going to just gear up in their own stuff. So they are geared up, which is lovely. Or they're trying to gear up, at least. You are off-duty. It is Obsidian, so this is their month off at the moment. No special orders. Routine says staggered training. Okay, and then you immediately started working out again. Maybe that did kind of repair some of the craziness with it. You don't have an axe, which is awkward. Oh, you do have an iron battle axe. Okay, great. So you're working on individual combat drill. What? I thought that was somebody's body part. <laughs> okay, that's great. I wonder if the other group is then having the same problem. So you are still looking for gear. Although I did just break the uniform. So let's go ahead and make a... I think it's all leather stuff. Caps. I think it's probably leggings. Gloves. Shoes. We don't really have a shield. We talked about this before. If we want to do a metal setup for our door, for our archer group. Did I actually ever assign the appropriate uniform? Oh, I don't think I did. <laughs> That's awkward. Uh, what are you missing here? No shield. I think I forgot a chest piece. It, that's the shield symbol, and then over here, there is a, a blank between the other things. Okay. I think they're good then. So I didn't do that pro appropriately. Let's take... But they're already nicely so... <laughs> they were so well equipped already. I'll come back and clean it up to specifically do, like, maybe basic axes versus, um, you know, on duty. That could be a thing, too. We could rotate through two squads, where one squad is always training at any given time, and the other squad is on uh, patrol duty and we could cycle it so that people always get time off they're always training but then they always are geared up and ready to go at their post ooh maybe that could be the more advanced version of our our, um, our military heading over to the schedules thing we're going to go back to the monthly schedule once again and equip always stay in barracks at need 10 that's what I believe off duty we'll call it try it again off duty is how I saved it so let me copy these orders and paste them into the empty places. I think the default training spot is good. Okay, I think maybe we have a lot more people tra excuse me, training now, which is great. Is there anyone not named soldier? There's Kiffy. I've ever named him to general. General Kiffy. Alice is in here doing stone stuff. What are you up to, buddy? You're hauling an iron helm to the appropriate... Why are you hauling this somewhere? You're probably hauling it downstairs to the other storage bin. Maybe because dwarves just dropped it in the wrong bucket. Yeah, having multiple storage areas for... Wait, why were you taking that downstairs? We removed the old classification for armor, I think. Let's find Alice real quick. This is the way to identify problems in the fort. I it's, know it's super annoying to just watch them do random stuff. Hold up, why are you... That's crazy. So you just went and stored this helmet. Are you grabbing a bunch of them? You are. You've got... <laughs> You've got six helmets in your hand. Are you thieving, Alice? What are you doing? Oh, okay. And you are going to drop... The nope, you grabbed another one. This is bonkers. Uh, oh, no. A stray yak bull has been found. Starved to death. Oh, hi there. Well, uh, it's been a while since I have revisited our animal sanctuary area. <laughs> so I think we've had a lot of new additions that have not been assigned outside. We have so many puppies. Let's go ahead and assign a couple of random friends here. The dogs can wander. The dogs actually might starve. There are a lot of dogs now. I think the yak bull was the only thing that might have gotten out of its area. We have a lot of stray dogs and random war dogs and stuff. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> Such is life. Oh, hi. There's a random fight with a cougar, apparently. Where did that happen at? Hello? Is there a were lizard hanging out right now? Ah, this was... Kib... Isn't, isn't the, the were person... Kib before in a couple episodes ago. I think we had a stealth visit by the were lizard, and I didn't even note it. And then there's a dead cougar. Perha apparently the were lizard. Huh. 
The were lizard has been sated. <laughs> oh god. I'm a little concerned that we did not get a notification of said were lizard. Yeah, I think I think this fort is going to get killed really quick, my friends. You know what? Here so I wonder what we should do. We'll probably roll right into another fortress if this one, you know, gets collapsed and destroyed. And I'm happy to, to take any suggestions into account for the next one. Some folks have said that it might be a good idea to go into the world configuration settings and change the amount of immigrants. The ma I think it's the maximum amount of immigrants you can get, which would help slow down the rate at which we get immigrants, we believe. I think that's the, the theory anyways. Great, looking good. Uh, how are we doing in our fancy minecart thing? No one seems to be using this whatsoever. Oh, that's right. We did tell everyone to stop gathering minerals. That would make sense. A lot of people are socializing, which is great. So it looks like you're not going to use the minecart if you have that order set to nothing, which kind of makes sense. Uh, by order set to nothing, I mean the standing order for hauling minerals set to ignore. So let's go ahead and go back to gathering and try to continue that massive cluster. Our justice room looks like it's done. We need a couple of cages, although I think we have a few from trading. But let's go in and let's set an order to make... I literally forgot how to make a work order for some reason. Let's grab a couple of cages. I think we need like 11 is what they wanted. So we'll grab about 20 iron cages. And then we'll say... Uh, anytime we're below 10, make 20, I think is what we'll do. No idea how many cages we'll need, but it might be helpful to have in case we decided to set up some traps or anything like that in the future. So iron cages are coming. Fantastic. A little low on drink. I wonder if we're out of... Are we out of plump helmet? Preparing a fine meal, brew drink from plant. You know what we might have to do is go into Ulfir and possibly set this to restricted so that all they do is brew. This would still let them socialize and have fun, but it is going to help keep things from keep doors from doing things like dragging a stone all the way downstairs when they don't need to I think that's what we'll do a couple of random crafters here we'll grab the other farmer slash chef sod Doran is the baroness consort of revered boards huh that's actually a pretty... Hold up. This is a pretty fancy person. You are from the Bust of Shell and also the Bust... No, this is the Bust of Shell. You are the Baroness Consort. You are the, the wife or partner of the con, of the Baron of the Bust of Shell. So you're actually... Fellow royalty is visiting us, which is pretty nifty. Hey, you know what we also didn't check out is in a while our nobles and how happy they are. Ooh, there's not a lot of happiness here. So Mayor Baron Odin is demanding that we make some large gems. He's also a little bit grumpy because his rooms are not quite nice enough. Just a smidge under the quality level. I thought I've really, we kind of went crazy here, putting in statues. We've got some armor racks, some tables in here. Um, The next thing I believe is going to be to go ahead and engrave this entire section. That should set it over the edge in terms of value. Great. Let's also go into our gem cutter and cut a... I don't know. I'm just going to say cut gems for a while. I'm sure at some point we'll trigger the appropriate gem demand. I'm really nervous about this guest thing. Grumpy Wolverines. So the cages are going to be created. Our hospital. Man, there's puke everywhere. We really do want somebody to go around cleaning up. I did have one person assigned to the cleanup duty. 
Let's grab Reg here. Reg, you're not assigned anywhere, are you? You are not assigned to anything. You have two lovers. You're so busy all the time with your lovers. Let's assign you to the facility services. Let's go back into facility services. Oh, that's the way we need to do it. We need to go into laborers and go into facility services and then make it a restricted thing. And also maybe just literally say cleaning only. Well, I mean, we really don't do anything else here. Cleaning, lever operation, yeah. Okay, so perhaps by restricting them to that job only, they will not get distracted with other things. That is pro uh, probably part of the issue there. Okay, our, whoa, our tavern is almost finished. Or in, if you will. So much to do, so little time. I really wanted to see if this would work out. I hate that people are just manually walking down the hallway here. Tell you what, let's finish off this bit of mining. I want this room to just go ahead and get ready to go so I can put down a huge massive stockpile. So let's finish out the mining in this section. Can dwarves just ride this? <laughs> Maybe that's what we need to do instead. Push off west. Ride west full of desired items. This is going to result in someone's death, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe ride west at any point. That would actually be really cool. Look how many people are thirsty from being down here so long. Uh, taking another quick peek at our stills. So, can we not... Are we unable to brew drinks right now? Let's get some of these jobs as priorities here. What are you guys up to? My lovely little workers. Ulfir the Brewer. You guys might be socializing, actually. Because when they're socializing, they're stuck. Ah, you are worshipping. And you are... Yeah, so they're worshipping at the moment. A child has been possessed. By the way, I kind of skipped over that lovely message. You claimed a crafts dwarf's workshop. And you are going to grab your items, which is always really helpful. Preemptively. I probably should close off these areas, too. Just in case. No, you're going. You're going to town here. Is this the spirit of Jexen coming back to haunt our, our dwarven town, our dwarven city of Panted Guild? <laughs> what if he just kept demanding things that would, like, like support beams? I believe he started work. Yep, he has begun his mysterious construction, so he did not require any additional materials. Love that for us. Oh, boy, there's so much hauling going on and pure chaos. What are you all up to? Bone Doctor is hanging out in the hospital. Appropriate. I don't think we've actually had any medical... Oh! What is this? Kiffy, on the 11th of Slate, which might have been last month, he was brought here to rest. That might have been overexertion. Kind of cool. Let's take a look at some of our soldiers and see if they've been getting wounded. <laughs> what if it's like missing an arm and we haven't even haven't even noticed that at all? I don't even think that would show up in the combat log because it's not technically combat, they're just training. <laughs> this this save is, is going for a minute. Alright, let's visit our Ooh, look at that. They look really good. That kind of looks awesome. Oh, they're waiting for combat training now. Oh, this is pretty cool. So once you get dwarves that are skilled enough. I think you're going to have someone leading a combat training session. So you're going to a dodging demonstration. This is really cool. I love this. They're, they're all formed up in formation here. Hey, this is a great time to make sure I've got everybody named appropriately. Soldier, soldier, soldier. How cool. I love this. There's Kiffy the General. How's your health, buddy? You have no medical history. I feel like he's not telling us the truth. A lot of these folks are a little bit grumpy. We don't have anyone that's like super raging yet. Why are you so upset? You're lonely after being away from friends. I can't see a summary of just like the little happy or, or grumpy face at all. We're missing two more dwarves from our squad of 10. This must be the month where our archers have off as well. You're sleeping. I bet you're the one who actually is leading the demonstration. So there's our dwarf that just woke up. We have one more dwarf who's missing. 
This is so cool. They're all in front. <laughs> this popped up when they went in formation. I thought it was special. Uh, our dwarven child, Lee Cot, has made a silver, siltstone rather, bracelet. Lovely. Are you a professional bracelet maker now, my friend? Here's Lee Cot. And no. No skill, I don't think. Just randomly made a, an artifact. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, buddy. I lost my combat dwarves. Who are we missing from the squad? I think they're all... If I find the soldiers, they should all be kind of in the same group, organized. Human swordsmen. All of our soldiers are waiting for demonstration. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wait, if all of you... <laughs> If all of you are waiting for the dodging demonstration, maybe there's an outside. Do we outsource our training? Oh, there are two dwarves standing here. So who the heck? Oh, they're watching. They're doing it. Well, that's awesome. Coaxack, fantastic name, who is our legendary potash maker, is leading a dodging demonstration. So all the other dwarves are going to get some skill from that. Now, I'm kind of curious if they keep doing this skill, will they get a trainer? I bet this dabbling teacher thing it will go up. Either leader or teacher will go up as they continue to train. Holy crap. Boy, does it look good to see our military actually working at the moment. Like, all ten dwarves are here. Granted, they're not all geared up. At least the graphic is not. Um, Mudung here is... Oh, that's right. We had some people who wanted to, to join for soldiering. That's awkward. How can I tell? How can we see? Now, now were, did you join because you wanted to come here to... <laughs> You're meditating on gambling, aren't we all, my friend? That's actually... Yeah. So maybe Ashro was the person who just showed up. So if we take a look for Ashro, what I'd like to see, is there a way to, to, at a glance, find people who signed up to, to stay with us in order to do X, Y, or Z, I guess is what I'm looking for. I don't see Ashro here, so they might be, there's Ashro. So here's the crossbowman part, and maybe it's Nil, so maybe Nil and Ashra were the two people who signed up to be in our squads. Well, in that case, why don't we go ahead and assign Ashro as the extra dwarf here in the 10th position? Oh, are you kidding me? Is this not sorted by name? <laughs> what a nightmare. <laughs> Well, wait, it should be... No, they should have some skill. None of these people have Marks Dwarfs. Well, they're not Dwarfs. So so that would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? I love how none of them have the Marks Dwarf skill. Even though... Most of them are in the squad. <laughs> I'm looking for the Crossbowman. I think he's a human Crossbowman. He might not be here yet because he didn't make it all the way to the, the entrance. So what is the point, by the way, if, if we're not, if you guys aren't skilled up? Here's Fath. Fath is an archer. You are a competent, no, you're a novice marks dwarf. Or novice. Or novice. So it just says no, uh, novice as opposed to any other skill. Marks dwarf. And that was Fath. And Foth already is in the squad. Weird that it doesn't actually show them having any Mark's Dwarf skill, though. Oh, it... I think it did. Nope, it still says not. Yeah, so that's not actually showing an updated skill level of Mark's Dwarfness. Alright, sorry for the diversion. I mean, that's what this game is half the time. Getting distracted with shiny things. 
Uh, let's see. I'm probably going to do a lot of the designation stuff between episodes because this is a pretty big move coming to a different area. Do we have any cages ready to go? Let's talk cages. Cages and restraints. Use the closest material. Keep on building after it's done. Let's go ahead and put down a bunch of our iron cages here. There we go. I think we wanted 10 cages. So maybe we'll say like these are the special <laughs> restricted rooms. Uh, we can also put down... I'll bring another... Uh, thing out here in a bit. So here's our table. Uh, we'll put a couple of random tables in the main room. I'm very excited to see how this is going to work out. I think I wanted to do doors in front of every cage. Okay, we'll make some more doors automatically. All right, let's take a look at the justice system. We've got a little bit of time left in this episode. We've not explored justice whatsoever. So, in order to start this up, I'm fairly sure... Oh, that's right, there's the fortress guard, too. That's pretty cool. We want 11 cages. We don't have any guards. We can do this from the noble menu. Got it. First off, we need to assign a thing. Where did it go? Dungeon. Okay, so here's the dungeon as a whole, in all of its glory. Okay, the dungeon has been created. I don't think there is a larger location to assign this to, it's just considered to be the dungeon. And we're just going to call it, unsurprisingly, the dungeon. Now, heading back over to our justice screen, we do have 11 cages, so somebody's happy about that. Let's head over to Nobles, and we have... Ooh, Champion is kind of cool. I don't know what Champion is, but I think we should assign no relative in skills. I would think Kiffy is the appropriate person for a Champion. Captain of the Guard. Now, here is where we're going to have to differ a little bit, because we have a military group. I don't want to combine the two. I don't want to use military and the... Axe Dwarf, sorry, the military and the, the Dungeon Master stuff. Let me take a quick peek over to, I actually have this open behind me. Uh, this is so bright. Let's go over to the Justice on DF Wiki. I've decided to have this open for the, <laughs> Justice, uh, for the future here. I'd like to, this is kind of cool. I'd like to learn more about, maybe it's going to be under the Noble screen, what a Hammer Dwarf is. Is this like an Executioner? Come down here to Hammerer. Noble Hoost. Yep, sure enough. Who serves as the executioner of your fortress, possessing no room or furniture requirements. Uh, if a dwarf commits a crime, he's subject to the hands at our sheriff, imprison the criminal in jail. Got it. Oh, that's brutal. If the crime was particularly fun, the Hammerer will execute the criminal by using a chain to restrain them, and then... Using something with the Hammerman skill will deliver a number of hammer strikes. Oh, 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 this is great. Okay, do we have any hammer dwarves here? Gosh, this is great. Uh, military commander, no relevant skills. Can I? <laughs> this is just absolutely mental. Can I go back to squads? I'd like to see... Uh, Captain, of, Captain of the Guard Squad. This is actually kind of what I was hoping for. No uniform. Captain of the Guard. Wrestler. Apparently is going to be the skill that's used. That would kind of make sense, right? You're you're kind of... Um, you're holding people back. You're, you're, you're pulling people out of fights and stuff like that. No one has any wrestling skill. I think I'm just going to go down the list. We'll do a better interview. We'll come back to this in a minute. Let me do another squad. I want it to be a combat squad. What I was hoping for was that it would give me... Can I do something like this and just say... I want a hammer. So if I make this the hammer... This will make sense in a second. Okay, are you equipped with a hammer? Assign ha for hammer. It didn't work. Oh, no one's in the squad. Now, if I go to look for people, will it give me the hammer skill? It does! Okay, so my... By restricting, by, by putting a weapon in, it tells me who's good with those weapons. What I was hoping for is a nice consolidated list of who's good with hammers, but apparently no one is. So, fair enough. Let's go ahead and remove this squad. 
and we do need to find a captain of the guard. I think that it would be really great as we start to like, you know, well, not start, but continue looking over dwarves. We probably... Dipped Pillars is our government, correct? I think so. We're probably going to be looking for somebody who has like no... No emotions or who doesn't feel anything when they when they get into fights. Because if you have someone who executes people all the time, <laughs> they're probably going to be a little bit bummed out unless they just have like, they just don't care. I don't know how to tell that. Reg here is already a manager, although I guess we could. Self-control. Resist sickness. Patient. I have no idea to f what to look for in, in someone who executes someone else. <laughs> really strong with a hammer. Fath is in our archer squad. I'm just spot checking a couple of random dwarves. High willpower. Uh, Pusillanimous. Oh, nope. Almost had it. Pusillanimous. Yep. What does that even mean? Personality-wise. Iron will and the ability to focus. Moldoth. You don't have any other real roles here. Okay. We are going to make... Just so I don't forget this dwarf. We are going to choose Moldoth here as our executioner. Hopefully, that's not going to be a role that's needed soon. Uh, errant right-click there. It was Moldoth, right? Oh, this is so hard to look at people. This has got to be better. <laughs> this this part has to be improved somehow. So there's our hammerer. Why can't we have the dungeon master as the same person? That seems like it could be a thing, right? So let's have the hammerer, Moldoth, as both dungeon master and hammerer. Now then, Cap Captain of the Guard is just going to be somebody else. So I think I'd like to find somebody who has a good physical straight... Um, Traits and stuff. Recovers quickly would be good. Quarreler. I don't think we want a quarreler. Anyone who recovers quickly is probably better off than anyone else. High willpower. High kin kinesthetic sense. Not somebody who's weak. I also am wondering... I don't think just because they're strong doesn't mean they're going to rip someone in half. <laughs> so that's probably not that big of a concern. What if it was someone outside of our entire... Dwarven civilization. We just we just plugged a random human in there. High stamina brawler. Ooh, there we go. Catton is a brawler in high stamina. You're in the archer squad. But I think what I'll do is, what's your skills at actually? How good are you? Um, now well, you you've started down the path of the archer, the ancient and noble path of the archer. Don't mind me as I quickly spot check a few more folks here. Hello? Human poet, pale ghoul, Kubuk, Kattergerig. <laughs> what is this? How are you a ghosty ghost? We have a white walker from the great north through the wall. It is known. You <laughs> didn't feel anything. <laughs> Oh, this is actually kind of hilarious. Does he li literally not ever think of anything? I honestly got to think this is a class of people who don't feel anything. Because they're undead. I mean, are you really hard to kill because, you know, you're already undead? Hold up, who are you with? You are a member of the Trest Liberty, so that you're not one of ours. Which is sad. You're 133 years old. You have 18 children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he heard the rough fruit was the place to enjoy oneself. Yes, indeed. No history. Great ambition. Unbelievably strong. Basically unbreakable. Quite quick to heal and very agile. What is this? Unbelievably strong. Kubuk. Now, you're here. Are you part of our group? Like, are you considered to be one of ours? Because I would love to have you in the military. <laughs> okay. He's not considered to be one of ours. He's probably in the others category. Just out of curiosity, could we assign someone random 
I doubt it. Surely not. He'd also show up really well because he's like bright blue. Yeah, I don't see a bright blue pale ghost dude. Well, that's exciting. Let's make sure we don't piss off. Uh, ghosty boy. The pale poet. <laughs> oh, the pale poet's a pretty awesome name. The pale poet. <laughs> ghosty boy, the pale poet. All right, sorry. Super distracted there. Um, Athel here, you are a poet. Again, we're mixing visitors, and there's the Lord Consort, Human Bard. I'm trying to just find one of ours here. Again, it's a it's a good spot to just get a bunch of people in one room. Mincot, aren't you one of ours? No, you are a merchant of panthers. It's getting harder to, to identify one of our people here. Maybe just one of the, just one of the general recovery recovers quickly people from a couple levels below. That might actually wind up being fine. There's Zazit, who is a uh, our assigned brewer. I don't want to take a Zazit. I think it was one of these folks here has a good willpower. The hammer. I mean, I guess maybe you can actually be all three. Why not? Captain of the guard. We're going to assign the hammer dwarf guy, which is Moldoth. So you are all three. You are the champion. Sorry, you are the captain of the guard, the DM, and the hammerer. Okay, that's cool. Somehow so near is the messenger. I don't remember assigning that one. So with that being said, why don't we rename you? You're already called the hammer, so we, we know you whenever we see you. Um, on get here, I wouldn't mind grabbing one more person that recovers quickly who doesn't know dread. I don't want named people, though. High willpower, but weak. Well, we'll figure this out in a little bit. Um, now that we've got somebody assigned here, what kind of information do we have and, and can we have? There's no intelligence. This is probably going to take some time. Open cases. Can I interrogate? Oh, <laughs> this is insane. No witnesses. What is this? No witnesses here. This is so strange. Let's just try a random interrogation. I hope this doesn't mean like someone's going to get the crap beat out of them. So Domas, the bone doctor, was beat up. So if can we interrogate Domas and, and get more information? Oh, I hate that this is not organized. Here it is, Domas. Let's schedule an interrogation. Just a casual interrogation. No big deal. This is great. Where's the hammer? Let's watch the hammer. So the hammer is going to interrogate now. All right, let's see what happens. We are randomly chatting with, I think, that is Domas, the bone doctor. Please don't kill him. Having a little chat right in the middle of the hallway. Great, you're satisfied at work. That's pretty fancy. Just had a casual conversation here. So you chatted with Domas, and there's no witnesses now. That's it. Oh, this is cool. What? <laughs> are you kidding me? How detailed is this? So, from our interrogation of Domas, misrepresented the facts surrounding the case in order to elicit information. Subject naively complied. No new pertinent information was revealed. <laughs> this is so awesome. X to doubt. Domas is the only person here in this in intelligence thing. Oh, that's so cool. Do I need to give our friend here the hammer? Do I need to give him a designate an office space? Let's take a quick peek again. Boy, trying to figure people out is getting really, really rough. This is part of the reason why, the, uh, by the way, why, why I love to rename people, because they're always at the top of the screen. All right, Moldoth, I think I'm going to go ahead and rename you. Um, we're going to go with... I'm rewatching Stargate, so I think we'll just go with O'Neill. For the moment, I can't think of any better name, and it's in my head. So, although I think it's O'Neill with two L's, specifically as a meme. What do you need, my friend? We did have some demands of people. Captain of the Guard is demanding their own room, their own quarters, all that kind of good stuff. Well, that's fair. So I guess we'll have to take care of that. We also had a demand for large gem. I really thought we would have made that by now. Mezbooth wants to live here. We're going to say no for the moment until we kind of clean this up a little bit. 
Righteous. Let's continue to mine out some more spaces for our nobles, our new nobles. This is all going to be the living area for our, uh, for O'Neill. Hey, this is all actually, yeah, I forgot about this part. This is all engraved now. So are you happy with your room, my friend? You are. You need two chests. Okay. That's all you need is just one more chest somewhere. So let's go ahead and build that real quick. And then I think you might actually be happy for once, you grumpy. <laughs> oh, awesome stuff. So we figured that part out. Axe Dwarfs, Jasper, nothing else going on. Great. Let's double check a few things before... Oh, wow. Yep, we are actually at time just about. So perfect timing there. Well, there's a lot going on. I feel like we're we're barely keeping ahead of everything. The, at least the, the military squad seems to have gotten their crap together. So that is very, very exciting. Speaking of stocks and crap and stuff, do we... <laughs> that was a brutal segue... We have gold bars. We do have some steel available. I think we can actually make mm, 75 steel bars. I think we might be able to go ahead and make a steel set of weapons and armor. I'm going to do that in the next episode. We're going to get our military squad really well equipped. We still wanted to flood this room out, but I was waiting for some more of this stone to be hauled in different areas. <laughs> two steps forward and always one step back because I'm always like designating new places to be carved out and then that resorts in, uh, results in more stuff to carry eternally yeah no one really used this cart whatsoever super bummed about that this is the track stop oh there's colonite underneath it yeah I don't think there's actually anything in the minecart itself well, that's a bummer. Uh, set the desired the items desired by the minecart at this stop. It is Kalanite. So that part is correct. And we are inputting uh, which the track stops vehicle will give. Choose the stockpile to which the stock stops, I will give items. Oh, I've got it wrong. I need this way. Is it not? Choose a stockpile from which the track stops vehicle will take items. Okay, yes, that was my fault. Okie dokie. Well, that's fine. We did finally finish mining out this area. So right before the end of this episode, instead of looking at someone's information, you'll watch me do some fantastic stockpile manipulation? Question mark? So that's taken care of. Let's accept that. And then we're going to set up yet another stockpile right below it. And this is going to be a stockpile just for metal. Metal. So everything metal related is going to go there. And then in the other one, it's pretty much, uh, we don't want any metal ores in that one. I will accept other stuff in this one. So this is more of a generic one. This is going to be metal only. So all that being said, at the end of the day, I think we're finally going to have all of the stone in the stock in the fort, like cleaned up somewhere. Oh, I see somebody actually did. Oh, it worked. Oh God, you're in it. Oh, please don't die. Who is this? <laughs> Here's Eter, the fish cleaner. Wow. You are flying. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hey, it worked. Did that, did that instantly dump out? I think it did. It did. It dumps it. Oh my God. It dumps it as a, oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. It, we can make this as a quantum stockpile. It dumped it automatically right here on the same tile. So instead of making a million dwarves come down here, hold up, hold up. This is epic because instead of having 10,000 dwarves, I make one single stockpile hold any stone. And then this one at the end, at the bottom of the stairs, I can just say, yeah, bring, bring whatever you want. That's not metal in theory and theoretically. Okay. So then. Real quick, oh, this might, I might cry. I am literally could cry from from the, the pure joy of what this might be. You ride back in it. Ride this way. One, just a few more moments for, for science, my friends. Because in theory, if, if there's nothing to do to here, there's no more stockpiles anywhere, all they're going to do is, is someone's going to load up a bunch of colonite here in the cart. That's the step. There's one. Fifth piece is coming. 
And then you get inside and you yeet yourself down the hallway. Holy crap, that's fast. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fast. Oh, Yasha, please don't die. And then she gets done. Are you kidding me? Now, how come she didn't take it back? Oh, she did. Oh my god, are you kidding me? This is so cool. This has revolutionized Dwarven organization. Because all we ever need is a little temporary stockpile at the start of the minecart. And then this is where we dump it. My friends, everything has changed. <laughs> all right. I will end this episode. I've been going over a little bit, but let's take a quick look at Sakzul here, the bard who is not from here. Nope. Uh, you are a visitor from the Subtle Wire civilization. You are a dwarf at least. What's your thoughts, Ben? You've been dejected after unable being unable to acquire something. You were unable to fight. I really can't help the fact that you guys aren't fighting, but maybe with the improvement of our tavern in the next episode or two, we will get into some brawl, some really epic dwarven brawls. Also, slightly mildly concerned that we are out of drinks. I don't know what's going on here. You're you're just taking a drink from the actual. Yeah, this is kind of concerning. We are super low on drinks. People are still planting. Like plump helmet is a thing. I do believe we are out of plump helmet seeds, though. Would be my theory. Yeah, so plump helmet has been made into everything. It's not the end of the world. Doors will just get grumpy because they can't make, uh, they can't drink alcohol. They have, we have water sources everywhere. So that's not really a problem. We need to start experimenting. Like I only use, I really only use plump helmets because it's the easy one to do. So I'll just go through and look at what other alcohols we can have and, um, start going from there friends all right thanks so much for joining me for this uh, slightly convoluted episode of panted guilds but more to come as always friends thanks for being here with me as always and i'll see you then again soon bye